Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, question five from 2010 paper, and that was at the start of Project Maths coming in. So there was two papers that year, a 2010 Project Maths paper and a non-Project Maths paper. So it's off the Project Maths. Part A, solve the equation cos three theta equals a half for theta an element of or, where theta is in radians. So the ones we were doing the last day were theta in degrees, um, and this one theta in radians, which, can make it, I, I, you just need a little bit of practice work in, in radians. Um, so first things first, make sure your calculator is in radian mode. Make sure when you turn it on, you've got an or in a box up the top and not D for degrees, that it's or for radians, okay? If it's not, now I'm in a Casio, your shift mode set up and you're hitting number four for radians. Okay, so to work out our reference angle, it's a bit thick. We'll work from here. So cos three theta equals a half. So three theta then I'm getting the cos inverse of both sides. So cos inverse of a half. When you get cos inverse of a half and your calculator is in radian mode, it will automatically go to a third pi. Okay. So three theta equals a third pi. Okay. And that's what we call our reference angle. Okay, a third pi, if your calculator is in degree mode, a pi is the same as 180 degrees. If you remember when we did it um, the last night, this is zero, this is pi, which is 180 degrees. Um, so you'd get 60 degrees for this. Okay, you are better off doing it like this when they specify that theta is in radians. Okay, so just like before, we need to uh, do our cast circle. C-A-S-T. Okay, um, and we are looking for what qu quadrants is cos positive uh, because the value we have here is, is positive a half. So where is cos positive? Well, it's positive here and it's positive here, okay? So cos is positive in those two circles. So these are the two circles where um, we will get a value of a half when we get cos three theta. Okay, so when you're in the first quadrant, um, remember it's always with respect to the horizontal axis. So when you're in the first quadrant, it's effectively zero degrees plus your reference angle. Um, so for my first one, so for quadrant one, uh, three theta is equal to a third pi, okay? It's your reference angle. Zero plus a third pi is three pi. And then for quadrant four, um, it's, remember, it's always with respect to the positive sense of the x-axis. So it's all the way around to two pi. It's two pi is 360 degrees minus your reference angle, okay? So your reference angle is always with respect to the horizontal. So that is the reference angle when you're in the third quadrant. I might just draw that in in red, something like that, a bit more probably because it's 60 degrees. So that's your reference angle. Like I said, it's always with respect to the horizontal, but you know from the last night that our angle is always anti-clockwise and it always starts over here, which is the positive sense of the x-axis. Okay, so that's why it is two pi, or 360 degrees, minus your reference angle over there. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Um, so when I'm doing that in my head, it's third, so that's six thirds. So minus one third is um, five thirds pi. Okay, so let's write them now in the general form. So we have three theta equal to a third pi plus n two pi. And over here, we have three theta being equal to five thirds pi plus n two pi. N two pi stands for the multiple rotations. Oh, it's, it's cos. There's the first one, second one, third one, 
fourth one. So the N2 pi stands for multiple cycles of that cosine wave. Okay, um, you're, yeah, let's divide across by three because we have to solve for, for theta. Okay, so divide across by three and we get theta being equal to a third divided by three is a ninth and N two thirds pi. And here theta is equal to five over nine pi plus n two thirds pi. Okay, and you can always do it on your calculator, a third divided by three, two pi divided by three. Okay, um, so in fact, the way this question is written because it's every single um, possible solution, so it's an endless number of cycles. Okay, it, it, it makes this question a little bit different from each other. You have to do it for all possible um, number of cycles. Okay, so in fact, this then becomes your actual answer. Okay, now remember what we normally do. We normally do n is equal to zero. So we'd get theta being equal to um, a ninth pi and theta being equal to five ninths pi. Nothing wrong with doing that. N is equal to one would be a ninth pi plus um, N becomes one here. So I'm adding on two thirds pi. And I'll get seven ninths pi. And over here, I'll get five ninths pi plus two third pi again. And I would get six and five is 11 ninths pi. Okay. And then we do N is equal to three because remember it's always the coefficient there in front of the angle that will tell you how many um, how many waves there are. Okay, so theta then would be equal to a ninth pi plus twice two thirds pi. So what am I doing here? I'm subbing in, not three. It is the third one, but not three. N is equal to two. So I'm subbing in two for n. And I get for that one, 13 over nine pi, theta is equal to five ninths pi plus twice two thirds pi. I'm doing it out like this because a lot of people would naturally do it like this because it's a, a cos three theta, okay? Because in majority of questions, it would give you a domain of naught to two pi, okay? So these would be the six angles that are between naught to two pi, okay? So the only thing I would do then is go down until n is equal to n, and then you'll get, in fact, what's written here in the box, okay? So you're just showing that it will be, that you're gonna sub in whatever your n is, you're gonna sub it in here and add it on. Okay, and over this side, we will get n two thirds pi. Okay, so that was that first part of that question um, from 2010. Okay, let's have a look at, at part B. So the last night we did some theories on, on how to recognize each of the waves. Okay, now first thing I see is they're all cosine waves. And that's because they're not starting down here at zero. So sine waves start like this. They'll be out of phase. So they'll be shifted, in other words, from these ones by 90 degrees. But they'd start here at zero. Whereas cosine waves start at um, one for a, a cosine wave. Okay, so all cosine waves. Okay, now, if we remember the theory that we did the last day. Um, do you remember we wrote the general form of, um, of a wave? Um, and there was a formula that I used, which was A plus uh, B cos CX. Okay, so this was an offset. This one here was the amplitude. And this one here is the number of cycles in a 360 degree or two pi if you're in radians window. Okay, so first things first, I'm gonna deal with A, okay? So if you can see, do you see the dark line there, which is the zero line? All of these 
um, cosine waves are symmetrical about zero, okay? Which means that my zero in this case is, is sorry, my A in this case is zero. So, so that doesn't exist in this one. So I'm, I'm just gonna delete it out then. That's why I have no A in this one, it is zero. So I'm left then with B cos CX, okay? And, and what you're doing or how you answer this question is you compare that with each of the waves you're given. OK, so B is the amplitude. So the amplitude for that first one is one. OK, the amplitude for this one is two. The amplitude for this one is three. OK, so therefore you can already say that that must be cos 3x. This one must be two cos 3x and this one must be three cos 3x. Straight away, we can tell it just from the amplitude because it's three different amplitudes, three different waves. OK, so just to complete out the question, I, I know we've now established which one's which, but how, how do we resolve C? So how do we know what C means? Well, when I see the 3x and the 3x here, that means I'd prefer, I, sorry, I, I would expect to see three waves within this window, OK? which I'm presuming is a 360 degree window. So let's have a look at cos 3x. So it's this, this one with an amplitude of one. So there's one cycle. There's two cycles. And there's the third cycle. Okay, so that's why that's a one cos 3x wave. The amplitude of two also has three. One, two, and three. Okay, now play, pay close attention to this because you could be asked to draw these waves. You could be asked to draw a sine wave or, a, or generally a cosine wave, not so much a 10. Okay, so when I compare this one and this one, can you see the peaks occurs at the exact same point on the x axis and the troughs, which is the, the most negative part, occurs at the exact same point on the x-axis and these what we call zero crossings occurs at the exact same points and that's exactly what you'd expect for a cos 3x wave okay so the only difference is the size of the wave the amplitude of the wave let's have a look then at 3 cos 2x so there's only two cycles of this in the window there's one and there's the second one, okay? So these don't have the exact same crossings because there's one less cycle of that one in the same window, okay? So we would say the, the 3x is a higher frequency wave, okay? It's faster in other words, and this would be a lower frequency wave. Okay, so let's try and label them now. So let me see, what's that first one? looks like the bottom one, doesn't it? So HX. So HX is cos 3X. Okay. The fully dark one is F of X, which is the big one, um, FX. So 3 cos 2X. And GX then is the, the smaller dashed line. Okay. So we've identified which function is which and written our answers in the spaces below. Okay, so I hope that makes sense, all coming from the general form of, of a trig function. Label the scales on the axis axes in the diagram in part B. Okay, so label it. Okay, so I would label him, I'm just gonna do it in red because it'll stand out, zero degrees, 360 degrees, no problem at all doing zero and two pi. If you would like to do it in radians, it really doesn't matter. It didn't say, okay, so perfectly fine doing two pi there and zero. Okay, now, first thing I would do is literally find halfway across because that's going to be 180, which is this tick here. Okay, so 180 degrees. And of course, half of two pi is pi. OK, and then half again, so half between 0 and 180 would be here. So that must be 90 degrees or um, in radians, pi over 2. OK, do it again between 180 and 360. So he's going to be 270 degrees. 
or of course three pi over two, one and a half pi. And then on our, our y axis, our amplitude is one, two, and three. And of course, minus one, minus two, minus three. Okay, so that um, again, not that you were asked, but um, the period of this waveform is um, 360 degrees over C, okay? Which in our case is 360 degrees over three. So it's 120 degrees. So what is the period of the waveform? It's um, the length it takes to do one complete cycle, okay? So um, any one of these ones. So there's 90 degrees. And can you see there, there's your 120 degrees. So one full cycle is 120 degrees. So I hope that makes sense. Whereas the bigger one, it took a full 180 degrees. Do you see that? To complete one cycle. And you'll get that from 360 degrees divided by two. Or of course, if you're working in radians, two pi divided by two, so pi. Okay, so 180 degrees or pi for the period of that one. So that's the period, not that you were asked, but you do get asked. And the other thing they love to ask is the range. So the range of that top one is minus one to one. Okay, the range of the bottom one, minus three to three. Okay, because it's, it's, it's symmetrical about zero and it's from, um, the, the three here gives you the, the peak, the positive peak, but it's also a negative peak. Okay. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision, and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.